Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmad and in this particular video tutorial, we will look at what are the different for each loop container options in SSIS. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is that we will look at the different options for the for each loop file enumerator. So let's jump to the demo. In the D files location, I got some files like fi emails.csv, emails underscore timestamp.csv and then emails then records.csv. Okay. So I want to create a for each loop container which can actually import this data okay but I don't want to actually import the data I just want to show you that if I change the different options in the for each loop file enumerator then how it will uh, fetch the file name or file path or you know file path without the extension or what are the different options that we can actually set configure while using the for each loop container and how we can actually pass the uh, values to the flat file connection manager and how we can actually parameterize the whole package so that we can just pass the for example the folder path from the parameter okay so we'll look at all these things all right so this is my blank SSIS package that I'm going to use today so first of all let me just drag and drop the for each loop container into the control flow window and then I can just simply configure the for each loop container for now I need to go to collection and uh, from the enumerator I will select the file enumerator and right now let me just select the path from which path I want to loop through the files to so because my files are situated in the D files location so I will select this option now if I want to import all type of file then I can leave this one star dot star as it is but I want to import only CSV file so I will change to star dot CSV okay now here inside the retrieve file name there are three options name and extension fully qualified name only so by default it is fully qualified fully qualified means then the for each loop container will iterate through the files so it will get the folder path plus file name for example if it will uh, read the value as emails so it will contain the value as d files emails dot csv it will uh, fetch that value and then it can assign that value to the variable here that you will create you know so you can create a variable and then you can just uh, select the variable here so let me create the variable from here itself I can create a variable from here itself okay let me call the variable as file path for now okay I can click on okay so this variable got created and now when the for each loop container will run so if it is fully qualified so it means that first time the value is d files emails dot csv it will be assigned to the file path variable okay and for second iteration this value you know d files emails underscore timestamp.csv this value will be assigned to the this file path variable okay and then this value file path needs to be passed through the flat file connection manager into the connection string so let me click on ok this thing and let me show you you know how you can use it so I'm just going to use a data flow task I won't import the data but I will just try to fetch the data from the file so that you know that the connection is working fine and it is dynamic so I just drag and drop the data flow task and now I can use a flat file source here so that it can just read the data from the flat file and now let me make a connection to the flat file I can simply browse the file CSV emails ok so data seems good here okay okay that's fine I won't import the data I will just use a uh, drive column here and I can connect the flat file with the drive column so so far we are good here if you right click on the flat file connection manager and go to the properties okay and then if you uh, you know maximize this one flat file connection manager so if you see here the file path is assigned to the connection string property here okay so we need to make the connection string property dynamic so that the folder path plus file name can be inserted to the connection string property so we need to go to expressions and from here we can select the connection string property and we can just drag and drop the file path here okay evaluate expression okay okay so this is fine so for example if I uh, run the package now and uh, maybe I can put a breakpoint here on the data flow task okay and if I execute the package then it should work fine it can just loop through all the three CSV files one by one and you can see that inside the progress as well 
I can also check in the output window. So it just started. Okay. If I click continue. So now I can go to the output window. So here you can see that it is started processing the uh, D files emails dot CSV and then it processed 1001 records and then the processing file ended. Okay. You can also check like which file it is going to load using the debug window. So debug windows locals so inside the locals window as well so this is the locals window now i created one variable file path so at the moment in the file path variable we have this value d files emails 10 records dot csv okay and now in the next run in the third run we have the value this one d files emails underscore timestamp dot csv okay so this is working fine and if we select a fully qualified then what happens that it get the folder path plus file path and it assigns the value to the file path variable okay now i have seen some ssi packages where they take like name and extension they select this option so if you select the this option name and extension then what happens that only the file name will be assigned you know file name will be picked from here like emails.csv without file path email underscore emails underscore timestamp emails 10 records dot csv so this value will be selected and this value will be assigned to the this variable file path variable but if i do, like if i do something like this name and extension and if i click ok so if you will run the package right now without any change then this process will fail because now in the file path you have just the file name and because you have just the file name so SSI does not know like where the file is situated on the system okay so that's why the process will fail so right now if you see inside the file path we have just emails.csv and if it will try to you know load the data from the email so it will fail of course because it doesn't know where the file is situated okay so you can see the error message cannot open the data file emails.csv so the folder path is missing so that's why you know it is failing here so if someone has selected for example name and extension then it means that it contains only the file name and that person need to concatenate the folder path as well okay so because it is name and extension then this is not the file path but it is the file name so we need to create a new variable here which i can call as file name okay and data type is string and then we need to declare another variable that we can call as folder path okay and uh, in the folder path uh, we can have the values like d files okay and in the file name uh, we can use the file name inside the for each loop container so here instead of file path it is file name okay so you can assign the file name to the file name ssis variable and uh, in the file name you got the file name in the file folder path you got the folder path so now you can concatenate these two variables together and can assign the value to maybe file path or you can just directly concatenate the values here in the flat file connection manager as well it's up to you okay so for example if i concatenate the variables here uh, maybe i can give the name here emails dot csv okay for now so if i want to concatenate the variables here so what i can do i can just uh, drag and drop the folder path here okay and uh, plus and plus backward slash two times plus and then i can just drag and drop the file name so this is how uh, the full file path will look like we will concatenate the folder path plus the file name now i can click on ok so this is the complete file path that can be used inside the flat file connection manager so if i check the flat file connection manager now so it should contain the uh, file path so this is fine this is working perfectly fine now if i execute the ssis package again so this time it should work because uh, the file name and folder path they are being concatenated okay so right now the value for the file name is this one emails.csv folder path is this one and the file path is this one so this will work fine now okay you can see that th this is working fine and you can check the output window that it is started loading it ended loading next if i do next so it is started loading another file finished loading another file so this is how you know it can work now 
so we have few variables here like the folder path so the value of the folder path this is configurable okay you can uh, assign the folder path from a project parameter as well okay so how you can do that you can right click on the project.forums open it and you can create a project parameter here and I can call the project parameter as folder path okay and to data type I can assign a string and I can for example provide this value d files so this is configurable now now if I want to use this value inside the SSIS package then I can go to the SSIS package and here for the folder path that I provided the value directly we can get this value from the project parameter so I can just assign the value from the project parameter folder path okay now I can click on ok so now this value folder path this is dynamic and this is coming from the project parameter so after the deployment of the SSIS package if you change this directory then the package will load the data from the new directory whatever directory you will provide okay so this is dynamic now now if you look at the for this loop container so the third option was um, name only so if you select name only so it means that when the package will run then it will get only the emails value from here okay so I don't know like in which scenario we use this, this thing but this is how you know it works so if I select ok here and uh, if I execute the package so I can show you like what kind of value our SSIS package file name will contain so if I uh, go to the variables here and I check the variable file name so you can see that it contains the value emails only so now there is no folder path here and now there is no extension here so we got the value without the extension ok so this is how it is coming if I continue the package of course so the package will fail because it can't load this file without the extension ok so this is how I don't know maybe if sometime we just need to have a list of the uh, files available in a directory uh, maybe then we can select this option or maybe we are using some variables and you know concatenating the extension from another variable so maybe in those scenarios we can use it uh, but the wi mostly widely used uh, setting that we use for the for each loop container that I personally use is the fully qualified because in the fully qualified you don't need to uh, concatenate the folder path and the uh, file name together you can just uh, you know get the full file path using the fully qualified okay so that works fine and uh, yeah there is one more thing uh, that I forgot to tell you for example if you are using the fully qualified then inside the variable mapping you need to select the file path and now uh, right now this directory you know this location this is hard coded this location so if you want to make this location dynamic so that uh, you can make use of the project parameter folder path so what you need to do you need to make the directory variable dynamic here so if you go to the expressions and check the settings here so there is a directory property so you need to assign the directory property from the project parameter so if you assign it from the project parameter then whatever value will be assigned to the project parameter you know in that particular directory the for each loop container will load the data from okay so if I go back to the for each loop container now now you can check that uh, we have used the um, project parameter folder path here so we use the project parameter folder path here and it will load the data from the d files location this was about like uh, loading the data from the for each loop container using the name and extension fully qualified name only and passing the folder path through the project parameter if you want to uh, load the data from the subfolders as well then you can tick this option traverse subfolder so if you select this option traverse subfolders so right now what what will happen that it will load the data from you know this location as well as from all the folders as well like uh, the archive folder in the archive folder I have some you know files here so now it will load the data from the archive folder as well all folders and files available at the D files location it will load the data from if you select the traverse subfolder and if you just want to load the data from this location D files only from this location with not using the other folders then you know you need to uncheck the traverse subfolder option so I will uncheck this one and I can click ok yeah so this was about the for each loop container like how you can configure it sometimes the uh, people get confused here so I thought to make a video on this one 
yeah so i think that's it for today's video and uh, if you have any question then you can comment on the video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on also that you will be notified every time we do a new video thank you so much